this is heavy. Awesome. I'm digging that's, the that's sleeves, terrible. man. I almost wore my Beetlejuice shirt. I literally was looking at it, and I was oh, like, yeah. nah, I'm not going to wear it now. Yeah, I always got hit. I always get hit. You know, I usually just wear this shirt straight up, I and mean, it's a lot. A lot of people can't handle it. Yeah. You know, well, a lot of people can handle it. They just like to give me shit about it. Like, oh, what's up, Beetlejuice? Dude, I wore one on the last episode we did with um, uh, the vintage Shih Tzu guy. Um, uh -huh. You being in vintage a little bit, you may know him. But uh, I had a... Uh, Welcome Skateboards makes this, they made this rad hoodie that's kind of like half black and half white with like cheetah print on uh, it. I was wondering where you got that thing. And dude, I posted it online and I think uh, Carl, I was like, what are you wearing? And he left it in the YouTube comments. And I was like, I thought it was a cool hoodie. Yeah. Um, so I was like, well, I won't wear it every episode. But uh, but Fallen used to have a, uh, a striped hoodie that looked a lot like your shirt. Yeah, um, dude, you were. I had that forever. I wish I had it, man. I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> I took it and then I wore it for years and years and years. Oh, man, that <laughs> there's where it went so right rad. there. <laughs> I, I want to jump online and see if I can find one. Um, yeah, I'm sure somebody's got one. Anyways, I, I love this shirt. I wear it all the time, and my chick loves it, which you know that's the most important because she's it looks the one, new. She's the one that it has does to, look brand. I've new. had it for over ten years. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, my buddy uh, Al from uh, Six Cycles made it a uh, long 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 time ago when it was blackboard 69 and i've had it forever my sh my friends will wreck me for wearing this shirt i you know i'm friends with all the haints so they'll they'll make i fun figured of me you too. were a hank no uh, no, no, no okay uh, no, i'm just I, I a hang know. around <laughs> okay sweet well, for the last 13 years we've had a couple of the haints so i don't know what makes a full-blood member but uh i was like yeah, yeah. Maybe this is the i don't know we'd member. have to turn off the cameras if we want to talk about that mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no 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 it's it's not like that at all they're just uh they're a group of buddies like i met them i'm from chicago well not originally but i met them when i was living in chicago and we the first time we met uh, we rode across country together oh wow okay yeah. and they're they're the uh, main nick resty and Dwayne and bulls yeah. and all those guys those they're the reason that i pretty much moved here really yeah, okay guess, sweet. yeah so i've been friends with them for many many years lots of miles traveled and their story yeah. sounded so rad <laughs> yeah, I know we only yeah. scratched the surface of some of the awesome tales from all the trips and stuff they've taken and stuff. We got to get them back on. It'd be cool. Yeah, part two would just only scratch the surface again, yeah. I'm sure. Well, dude, thanks for coming to hang. Jeremiah, yeah. big fan of your photography. I've been following you online for a while now. Thanks, and uh, man. I think you have a really unique perspective on all your photos and the way you do things. And I saw something online right before you got here. Um, you have... Uh, like a gallery or something coming up in January. Oh, yeah, Is that yeah uh, I'm pretty. F yeah, I'm pretty f fortunate. Uh, I got invited to show my work at the Gadsden Museum of Art. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'll have uh, my Finding Faith show will be up there for from June third and for about a month. So the opening reception is June third. Sweet. Um. So. So finding faith. What is that, or what is the show based around? I so guess. the show is. Uh, that project has, be, has been an ongoing project. When I moved here about five years ago, I didn't have a job. I just had my camera, and I hadn't really done, like, um, like any sort of documentary photo work ever. I just kind of got in my car, started driving around, and just taking photos of, of stuff I saw. I would stop and, you know, pull over and talk to people and ask if I can make their portrait with no nothing really in mind of just, like, getting to know my neighbors, you know? So... And I live down in Helena um, on the Bessemer side, and uh, I would just ride around Bessemer and Woodstock. And when I moved here from Chicago, um, I was like, man, the South is a culture shock. I've spent a lot of time in Birmingham hanging out with Haints, like visiting and having birthday parties down here and stuff. But when I actually moved here and got to like drive around and get on my motorcycle and just ride around and meet yeah. people – I was like, this, this is different down here, you know? Like, it's it's a crazy culture shock from where I come from. Um, so I just started taking my camera with me everywhere, and I would, have, you know, I would go and just kind of do the same circle and meet the same different people. And um, it was a lot of people of poverty, a lot of people out in Woodstock, Green Pond, in Bessemer, a lot of, like, very poor people. And 
I can relate to that a little bit. I grew up on the poorer side in Northern California. So I ended up like just in, they were always like so happy and so just stoked. And they always thanked God for everything that they had, you know? And I was like, well, that's fucking crazy. You don't have a lot. <laughs> and I was like, but you're still so stoked. And I, and I, you know, and I was like, I could really, everyone could really learn from that. Like yeah. you don't got a pot to piss in, but you know, you're, there's a smile on your face and you're, you're greeting me into your home with open arms. You've never fucking met me in your life, you know, like, and I'm just coming in hanging out. And, um, I started making portraits of people and I was like, all right, there's something here. Like I can do a project with this. I was like, I just started asking people to write me letters of what faith meant to them. So I got like, you know, all these handwritten letters from these different people who are. These my, are all just people you've met. Just, uh, just out traveling randomly. around randomly. Yeah, yeah. Just people like just basically just knocking on doors, you know? Wow. Not necessarily knocking on doors, but finding, I always find a way kind of in. <laughs> yeah. Like not a sketchy way, <laughs> but be like, what's up? Is that car for sale? Like, or, you know, like whatever, like pull over and t on my motorcycle and then just start talking to me and, you know, and go back seven or eight times with my camera just around my neck, but never talk about it. Yeah. So they just get comfortable with me. And then one day I just like, just start taking their photo and they don't think twice about it. Hmm. And my whole deal is like, I want to, uh, you know, bring a lot of these people have never seen a photo of themselves ever. So like, I'll take a photo of wow. them, I'll print it and frame it, and I'll bring it back to them, and their mind is like, man. kaboom. And it's like a good photo, man. Yeah, like, yeah. and it's that's like, like, you know, and that's, you know, that's what this is all about. Like, you know, something tangible that you can hold in your hands, that's, you know. But getting back to the, to the letters, like, I started, like, it was just faith in, in different forms, and, you know, mainly your typical Southern Baptist god form but there i have all kinds of different letters and so i started printing out the letters and i started printing out the photos and putting them together and i was like oh there's something here so you know i did my you know website with it and stuff and um and then it turned into a show i went and showed it in chicago a few years ago um at the robert DiCaprio gallery at, at a college up there um and then it's been sitting in my darkroom for a couple of years. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I haven't done anything with it until now. So now, how did you? What was the? How did you make the connection with the Gadsden? Gadsden, Gadsden Museum, the Museum of, of Art. How did mm -hmm. that come about? Uh, my buddy Doug Balos. Uh, he's a he's a really amazing artist around Birmingham. Um, I, I call him my buddy. We've we've known each other very briefly, but but he <laughs> he's a really good friend of one of my friend uh, Brandon Smith, and he introduced us and. He, he's a pretty established artist in Birmingham, and he was like, well, I'm going to help you get some of this stuff seen. So he he did a lot of that legwork for okay. me, and he just – he I guess he, he knows the guys over there and was like, hey, check out this kid because I'm no, I'm no like, formal sure, artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I carry around a point-and-shoot camera, and I – like when I had to do my show in Chicago, they're like – all right, we just, you know, and that was my buddy too, but he was like, all right, we just need you to present um, your CV, your artist statement, this, that, and the Throwing other. on all this jargon. Yeah. It's, you're like, what, what like, is that? I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? I don't have no idea what an artist statement is. He's like, well, you just got to write about, and I was like, well, well okay. So <laughs> through multiple friends, uh, my friend Jill helped me write that, and it's just been, you know, I've learned so much, and that's how you break into the elite world yeah, yeah, of, of yeah. the art, I don't know artists. Be, yeah, I don't know if I'll be breaking into any elite world of that, but you know, any photographer that's worth anything, they don't get famous till they die anyway. Sure, so yeah. <laughs> well, everybody's doing it too. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I try to do different, and I like you know, I would I would definitely get. Um, I've been discouraged a few times from different projects and stuff, and and you know, I'm just be like, damn it, like this is supposed to be fun. Whatever happens, happens. I just have to keep that mindset, you know? Like, yeah. Same thing I did with skateboarding, turn it into a job or whatever, and then, you know, got bummed out about it. So it was like, I'm not going to. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, all right, well, let's, we'll get to that. Take me back. Um, you said you grew up in uh, Chicago, 
or lived in Chicago. I was, grew up in California. Before yeah, that, I, I was born in Northern California. Okay, in this in Santa Cruz. So uh, you don't have to take me back to the very beginning, but what what <laughs> kind of brought you here to Alabama and and the friendships you made where you started coming down and hanging out? Um, so living in Chicago, uh, skateboarder moved, moved there when I was nineteen from California. Just like any transition that I'm sure you've heard from any of our other friends that have been on here, like skateboarding to motorcycles happens pretty easy. It's an easy transition. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up, um, my buddy, we were riding to California and we were riding from Chicago to California. It was my first time ever like going on a really long trip with my buddy Warren. And it was like, hey, I'm uh, riding to California. I'm meeting these guys in Allison, Arkansas called the Haints. He's like, this was 13 years ago, 12 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. And he was like, do you want to come with me? And I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So I'd never met these guys in my life. And I rode, um, we rode from Chicago to Allison, Arkansas, sun up to sundown, met them in a parking lot at a gas station, went to a, found a campsite, got completely hammered <laughs> and uh, re- spent, a month on the road traveling to California wow. and they, Dang. you know, instantly became best friends with all of them. Dude, so that's awesome. that is so cool. What were yeah. you riding? Do you remember? Uh, oh yeah. I remember. Um, it was a Yamaha XS 750 shaft drive, three cylinder. Okay. I don't and know what that is at all. It's, it sounds awesome. It, yeah. yeah it, it was awesome until we were in the Mojave desert and I ran it out of oil and I tried to, Oof. um, fill it with oil and keep riding. But Dwayne and Nick and everyone were behind me and I went to go past the semi and uh, the case blew out, the shaft drive locked up. Oh, dude. And I slid under the semi, slid back. I blew oil and engine casing all over the boys. Dude. And that thing got left in California and I flew back. you'd be alive, man. I, oh, I flew back home. Shit. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, a trip like that, you know, you figure out what you're made of and, yeah. and if you're going to click with certain people. Sure. So, you know, I those guys were a good fit with me and I was a good fit with them and we got along perfectly and went back to Chicago and just stayed in touch. And over the years, um, Nick and all those dudes were nice enough to be like, hey, when's your birthday in March? He's like, we'll, we'll throw you a birthday party down here at the dojo. So I drive down and party for a weekend and they'd throw me a birthday party, you know, and uh I would go back home, and we've done many, many, many miles across the country in every which way. You've, and then uh, from there, um, in 2015, uh, Steph and I sold everything we owned, and we moved into a camper trailer. Okay, yeah. And, and we traveled the United States, and we were when we were traveling, we did like 42 states in just under two years. And we're like, all right, we want to live somewhere where we're 20 miles outside of a – you know, a semi small city. We want to have our own property. I want to be able to ride my dirt bike out my back door. You know, we had a checklist and we found this house out in Helena and it hit every single mark on our checklist. So we're like, all right, well, let's just live in Birmingham. It's going to be easy transition for us. We have friends there. We already had, you know, jobs set up. So it was a pretty easy, easy enough transition. Dude, that's awesome, man. Mm, Yeah. Where did the idea um, to go on the road come from? Because you, you sent me some info about you guys had like an Instagram dedicated just to your travels and stuff. That's yeah. the one I saw. That's yeah. the one I was scrolling. And then I didn't even know that, man. Like when I originally reached out to you, I was like, yeah, come on, talk about photography. And I know you, you know, obviously, you know. Well, yeah, I want to give you something else like, to talk about. <laughs> really, well, motorcycles are really intertwined with all your yep. photography and stuff. And I was like, yeah, we'll talk about bikes, talk about photography. And then uh-huh. you're like, hey, I got this other page. And I'm like. Telling Zach, I was like, I think this guy lives <laughs> on the road. He's like a nomad. He's coming yeah. to hang. So. Yeah, that was that. That's old news now. Um, you know, we're tied down now. You know, mm-hmm. but, but you uh, did that for like two years. You said, yeah, 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 yeah. So living in Chicago for a long time, I you know, I became a man in that city, and it was definitely you know one of the best experiences of my life. But for me and my chick, it was just getting stale, you know? You'd go to the same bars. And Cold in Chicago, man. It's yeah. a little warmer down here, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, for sure it is. Dude, especially right now. East Coast getting hammered, blizzards. And no kidding, man. All that so stuff. I definitely, I, you know, I love it there, but there was no room kind of for us 
to grow. We we you know we were in apartments and. I was worried about gangbangers, like, you know, pulling guns on me or what, whatever the city brings, you know, just all kinds of, all kinds of amazing stuff and all kinds of scary stuff at the same time. And it was kind of just like, you know, I love this place to death, but I'm just getting, we're just getting tired of it. Like, let's go try something else somewhere else. So Alabama. (laughs) Well, yeah, that wasn't the plan. Uh, The plan was to figure out like, you know, where we wanted to live. And yeah, we ended up here and and we love it here to death. Um, But that's what led to the, hey, let's just go explore the whole. Yeah. So we, we, we had a, we had an estate sale. We sold everything out of our apartment. We saved up 10 grand. We turned off our cell phones. We bought a flip phone. She navigated the whole country with a paper map. We had our iPhone still, but it would only work with Wi-Fi. So we'd pull in a McDonald's parking lot and look something up. Yeah. So we had no bills other than gas, insurance, and food, um, and then a prepaid flip phone that costs like thirty bucks that you buy at Walmart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and we refurbished the inside of a nineteen seventy two Midas Frolic. It's a little fourteen foot camper trailer. Yeah, I saw some pictures. That thing of looks it. so cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I've got really Katie. If you flip over to the next tab, I've got that um, Instagram pulled up. Pull up a picture of that. Pretty cool. Yeah, that first photo on the left yeah. up top right there. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it, it, man. Uh-huh. Dude, that's awesome. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So Do you we already had... have the van? No, I bought the van. So the van um, held my motorcycle in it. And um, Nick Resty actually designed that big wing on the side with the okay. frolic on it and all that. He designed all that, and, put, and we put that on there when we were just passing through Birmingham. We worked at J-Rag for a little while. Okay. Stayed at Daniel Bowles and Allison's house, actually right around the corner. Yeah, they're that not thi- far. That thing was camped right there for like four or five months. Just while you in their renovated yard. it and stuff? No, we were just working at J-Rag and oh, stuff. Okay. But uh, yeah, with, with the help of a lot of our friends in Chicago, we refurbished the whole inside of that thing, and we just kind of hit the road. And uh, we, we had – we just kind of like – Looked at a map and we're like, all right, we got homies here through skateboarding and motorcycles and everything else, music. Like, we got homies here and we'll go here and we'll stay with this person. And so we we made it about six months without having to work at all. So we lived on five grand for about six months. Dude, man. And uh, then we're like, all right, when the bank account gets to five, we got to start working, you know, because we didn't, you know, we're not one of these like, you know, hip couples that were like, you know, generating all these followers and just being like getting paid. Making a living. Yeah. Off of we're like, YouTube we got to fucking stuff. work. You yeah. Know? Sure. So we ended up uh, having to uh, to work and we just did odd jobs. Like Steph was a counselor at a hockey camp in upstate New York. What? Okay. <laughs> yeah. She was like, they're like, you know about hockey? She's like, oh, yeah, of course. Oh, I do. Yeah. Don't beat the other kids with the sticks. <laughs> yeah. uh, so know. I'd have to like, you know, I'd be at the, we'd be at the campground or whatever. And I'd drive her to, to work every day and be like, good luck at the <laughs> hockey camp, I guess. Yeah, I just post uh, it up at like a local campground. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, we refurbish someone's, f- we, tore apart demoed someone's house floor thing and i worked at different bars as a bouncer and that's cool yeah so but yeah we went all the way out to the west coast and all the way up to maine and everywhere in between we did about 42 states or so and just under two years man and then uh we ended up kind of back at her parents house in iowa and i was working in chicago for my buddy Bobby the leg. I was uh, doing metal fabrication for for him, and uh, I was like, "Listen, I love this and all, but I'm ready to be around friends, and I'm ready to have like a stable job." So it was never like, "Hey, we want to live on the road permanently." You know, she would have. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I would imagine. She would have. You see all these YouTubers and stuff doing it, and it's like the hip thing. It's the know? hashtag van life. Van man. life, yeah. And yeah. even he's done it. You know. Yeah, and but I like, was not on the. On the the hip part of it. Well, it's it's hard to make the hipster list, but <laughs> for sure. But yeah. it just it seems like it would be it'd be kind of tough, you know, especially no. after spending so much time on the road. It's like, man, I we kind of like to have a home base. Oh yeah, you know what I mean, we called it relationship boot camp. Yeah, because 
it was like, you know, we get in a fight or whatever, and it's like, all right, fuck you. I'm, like, like, I'm going right, to stand outside. She's like, fuck you. It's like, and I go outside, I'm like, all right, we're in the middle of the yeah. desert. Uh, guess we got to figure this out, you know? It's like, want to make dinner or not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was like all the little piddly shit, like day to day shit that, you know, you get frustrated about or situated about. It's like, there ain't no time for that because you got to figure out what your next move is. Mm-hmm. You got to figure out, like, Hey, I'm pissed at you, and you're allowed to be pissed at me for a little while. But then you got to get back in the van, and we got to keep moving because, or, or you can just fuck off. Like those yeah. are the options, you know. Like there's no, you just. So we learned a lot about ourselves. It, it almost ended our relationship, honestly. Like it was close. So we learned a lot about ourselves, and we learned a lot about like what's important. And like when this pandemic hit, we're just like well, this is fucking easy. We're just, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're with each other all the time. We've been with each other in a 14 foot square foot box. We've for, been put to the test. Yeah. It's yeah. like, we were super prepared for, for all the stuff. People are like, I'm, and I'm not trying to discredit anyone when I say this shit, but people were losing their minds being like, I have nothing to do. And it's like, they're like, I'll learn how to bake bread or whatever. It's like, okay, like you can be taking care of your health or yeah. something. Like, <laughs> You know? Go for a job. Yeah, like, you know, but like, um, so, you know, I mean, I'm not to discredit anyone, like I said, but, it, you know, we learned we learned a lot from doing that right there, and it's made us definitely better people. Cool. Well, I'm glad you ended up in Bama, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm very glad I'm here. We've been here five, it was five years now, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I wouldn't have known it. Uh, just looking at your photography and stuff, I was like, oh, he's Bama native. Yeah. <laughs> Good, Dan. I'm a poser. <laughs> but I guess, you know, through your travels and, and maybe, when did you first pick up a camera and get interested in, in shooting photography? So I've had that, uh, I've had this, that little, we were talking about earlier, I've had that little Canon EOS 1N for since high school, since, yeah, since high school, since like 2001 or something. And um, I always would like bring it with me on motorcycle trips and be like, you know, just put it on program mode and shoot. And the photos were great. I kind of naturally had an eye for like what, like how to frame stuff and Mm -hmm. stuff to look cool, you know? Um, Were you the designated filmer in your skateboard Crew. No, I wanted to be, but I was a much better skateboarder than I was. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, oh, filmer. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. No, that sucked for me, I guess. Uh, I'd have a lot less surgeries under my belt if I was the filmer, that's for sure. But, I mean, with that being said, like, I just basically, you know, just program mode, shoot, and hope for the best, and send my photos to Walgreens, get in process, and be like, hell yeah, these are cool, and put them in, a, put them in an album, you know? So yeah. I always kind of respected photography, but... I didn't consider myself a photographer by any means. I always had friends like – I had friends that were much better filmers when I was skating. And then I got into motorcycles and I was like, oh, I'm going to start taking photos of, you know, of my of our motorcycle trips. And I did a little bit, but then I had one of the best motorcycle photographers ever, Josh Kirpius, was, is one of my best friends. And he really? he, he was like – taking all the photos and I was like, well, his photos are great. Like I don't need to bring my camera. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So, and then we went on our trip and I was like, all right, I'm going to get a digital camera. This is going to be sweet. And this is 2015, yeah. you know, it's a little late to the game, but I was like, I'm going to get a digital camera and I'm going to like, cause I thought maybe it would help us like maybe get a sponsor or like have a, sure. so we had a blog yeah. and yeah, man. you know, you're looking at the Instagram, but this is kind of where I've, I gave up right there. Was this a part of the infamous blog that was super popular back no, then? No, the the Haint 69 blog spot? No. Okay. I don't okay. think so. No, that was their own you may, thing. You may have dedicated. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was like their own. Like, that was their, their own thing. Their thing, yeah. I definitely have been on there doing debauchery, <laughs> yeah, but dude. that's separate from this for sure. Okay. Oh, damn, sorry. Um, but yeah, so I started, I, same kind of thing is I got a, a little Canon um, 50D. 50D. Yeah, okay, it's yeah. like the little man's version of the 5D. Yeah, and uh, I don't. Did th- it have the flip out LCD or no? No, 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 no. no, okay. no. Uh-uh. That was the 60D. I think that had that. Yes, yes, yeah. The 50D was just like like the step above the film camera, pretty much. But it was digital. It was nice, and I shot. You know, most of those photos you see there were all shot with that. And then um, I just tried to keep up with the Instagram and do the blog and. 
you know, try to be like, yeah, maybe someone will just give us money to keep traveling. And then that never happens. So that's fine, though. It's always the dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we tried a couple of times. Yeah, like, everybody's I was like, tried. Yeah. I'd rather just work. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just like be like, I've been working since I'm like, 10 them. years old. So I'm just like, Clout, yeah. yeah, I'd rather just be like, this is so hard to like, because then, you know, once someone starts paying you to do that stuff, you know, you're like at their mercy of just mm-hmm. being like, all right this is what you're going to post and this is when you're going to do it. And it's like, fuck that. Like, we're just going to do what we want to do. Yeah. And I'll just work at the bar <laughs> along That's the way. Cool. So, but, but um, you stuck with it, I guess, just yeah, as a passion. I, yeah. I stuck with it as far as photography goes. But even at that point right there, I really didn't even know what I was doing with the camera. Yeah. Flip back to uh, the other tab, Katie. Probably has more recent stuff. It's yeah. Th- a lot of this is. Like a lot of this is just like, it just lo- seems like just random, like day in the life of Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I'm hanging out with Bob and here's y- Bob's truck. <laughs> exactly. You know, or yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. If you scroll down a good ways, like if you get back, it'll go black and white and then it'll get back into the color stuff. But um, a lot of bikes, a lot of butts. Yeah. A lot of bikes uh, and butts. Bikes and butts. Yeah, for sure. But, um, that, I mean, that's all Daytona from our trip to Daytona, motorcycle trip stuff, but um, some rodeo action going on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, randomly rolled up on a rodeo, and me and Steph did, and told them I was the photographer, and they just let me in, and I just started shooting photos yeah. of people. Well, this is so rad. Like, it's, it's like a cool way to document your so life. Much, yeah, you know there's so I mean? much character. It's not just fucking selfies, just fucking, uh, yeah. here's my face, here's my dumb face again, here's my face. It's like yeah. your perspective on things. It's cool to see it's it this so big. Rad. Yeah, thanks, man. It's fun, and... You know, I try to just keep it real and, and you know, raw, I guess. That term is so weird, but I just try to just keep it. Candid, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want it to be, funny. I want it to feel real. Real. You know? Almost I don't, like you were there. Like you were in the moment. Yeah. 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 That's that's a rough project that I, that was the first documentary project right there that I worked on. Um, it's still an ongoing project, actually. It's called Through Mikey's Eyes, the guy on the bottom left there that's mikey he's mentally challenged 36 year old i rolled up on them um if you scroll down a little bit more there's a photo of keep going there's a photo of them on the front porch if you keep going uh there it is right there on the left that middle one Uh, yeah that was the first time i ever met them so that's him in the window there wearing a diaper Angel, uh, I forget the guy on the left's name. I only met him that one day. And then that's Craig, his his father. In the middle. That's Mikey's father. He has since passed away recently. But Angel is the sister. Mikey's there in the middle. And uh, they were sitting just like that. And, you know, this that was the very first, you know, documentary photo I ever took in my life. Like, I was just like... Now, was just, this just like a personal project you were doing or... Or it, just, it was just it was just me driving by in my car and seeing that scene right there and being like, "This is so raw." Like I just need to take a photo of this. Yeah, hmm. I was like, "I'm just sitting there." Like, and you know, Craig has struggled. He's struggled with heroin addiction for thirty years. Um, Angel has a number of issues that that she's worked through and is doing better now, but. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was just a, a really raw scene. So I just stopped and talked to him and kind of just, you know, introduced myself and was like, hey, you guys just sitting here look so cool. I was like, I just love to just make your photo. So I, they're like, yeah, I guess, sure, weirdo. <laughs> what do you say to that? Yeah, yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you, I mean, people have sold. Especially told, out told, like rural areas. Well, know. people have told me all kinds of shit to fuck no, get fucked, or, you know, or, yeah, absolutely, or, why or yeah. you know I, I mean what for yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. i'm a skateboarder of 25 years i've been told to get fucked many times so the fact that someone tells me no you're not taking my photo like get out of here i'm like all right have no disrespect at least i asked you know yeah, like, yeah. I've, and i've never really been met with hostility ever like ne- some people would just be like most of the time it's just like you know they just don't quite understand but they're like whatever i mean well, most of the okay. time it's yeah. it's yes and sometimes it's it's uh maybe next time yeah. yeah but 
Yeah, so that project just stemmed, and and then I started going over. I brought, you know, same thing. I brought them the photo back. Not that photo. I brought, like, a nicer photo of them together back, and um, I ended up. Uh, Ooh, Gip over there. That's awesome. Yeah, Mr. Gip, yeah. And uh, ended up just uh, becoming a part of their lives. Kind Mr. of building that relationship. That's wild, man. I can't, one photo can lead to, like, a, yeah. a long relationship like that or, you know. Yeah, and I would take Bunch of cool stories. Yeah, and I would take Mikey out to lunch, or I would bring him, you know, some of my old clothes that I was going to go to the Goodwill because they they were struggling at the time. If you scroll up again, there's some photos of like inside the house. If you keep going, there's one where he that far right one right there. Yeah, that's the inside of the house. That's Craig inside, and if you go back. One more, I think there's one. Yeah, that's inside the house. So they 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 lived a rough life, you know. There's yeah, no yeah. no electricity, no running water in a house, and uh, and this is uh, where is this? This is in Bessemer. Bessemer, okay. Yeah, but I became so close with with Mikey. He's like nonverbal, mentally challenged. I'm not exactly sure what he suffers from, but we're the same exact age, right? Mm. And uh, every time he sees me, we get he gets stoked. Like he's like, yeah, like, yeah just okay. gets fired up, and it, like won't let go of my sleeve. Like I'm giving him my my headphones, and he's listening to music. And I was like, he well, loves it when you come around. Man. I was like, like I was like, awesome. yeah, but he's always positive no matter what. And it just kind of made the same thing made me realize I'm like, this is such a unique situation. So I sat, you know. Craig and and his mom down and I was like hey you guys have a really you know unique situation I feel like a lot more of America lives like this than people know of and I was like I feel like it's important to to document this I was like I've you know you've let me take photos but I want to kind of and I didn't post any of them I didn't show them to anybody or anything and uh just out of privacy you know I just had them and then I started, and then I put it on my website after she was like, yeah, if you think this could help someone uh, down the line and show someone a real side of America, then, you know, feel free to post it. Like, we're not, we're not ashamed. Like, this is, this is, this is real life. So, Mm -hmm. so I would just go over there and hang out and we would, you know, just go get food or we would just hang out in the house or we would just, you know, and, and I consider them friends, you know, and I just got stoked seeing Mikey the same age as me and being like, how many steps away in my life or how my father raised me was I from being Mikey? Yeah. You know, it was like maybe it was just two quick turns away from, you know, from being exactly like that. So it was like it was, you know, it was interesting um, it was a lot of, of me just like kind of realizing a lot about myself in, in that situation and realizing how I grew up. Cause I, like I said, I mean, I grew up, I mean, not, not as bad as that, but a few steps away from being just, just like yeah. that, you know? So it was cool. I mean, I learned, uh, you know, and I was still in contact with, like I said, Craig passed away recently from non drug related issues at all. But um, I'm still in contact with Mikey and his mom, and she they're in a better house now. They, she has a new boyfriend, and everyone's getting treated well, and Mikey is doing good. And so, yeah, it's just one of those things is, like, I, d- I never knew a camera could take me to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's rad that you have the, the kahunas to actually just pull over, go just meet people, people and get out and, and do that. And I think society, you know, we're getting more and more closed off with technology, and it's like – I don't even have to leave my house anymore. I can have food brought to me. I can have entertainment brought to me. I can work from home. You know, why do I even need to have a car? You know, like I don't even have to, <laughs> I never sure. had to leave my home. And, and to see someone like you that's still making an effort to go out and to explore, you know, especially like rural parts of Alabama and other yeah. states and, you know, places I've never even been, it, it's really neat. It's really, I don't know, interesting to me, especially that shows through your photography. It's like, where are you right now? Uh-huh, and who yeah. are you meeting today? And, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of really interesting characters. And, and my biggest thing cool. is like I try to just approach it every person with respect. I'm not there to get a photograph. I'm there to make a relationship. Yeah, to be someone's friend. 
like anybody could just go around and take photos of of people that people in you know unfortunate situations you know sure my whole deal is like there is like living here there's a stigmatism about alabama and i try to 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 break that and show people real people in alabama that actually you know are of importance and that are breaking the molds and sometimes the mold that you think just because it's a picture of them and then you read about them like i have a friend in there that like you know he's got a confederate flag in front of his house and he's dating a, a black chick and his and this chick was like hey like you know they were dating for years and she's like hey what about the confederate flag you think we could like take that down he's like what why he's like she's like he's like this is this guy terry and he's like what what's wrong it's the south you know and she's like that's ah, you know pretty racist you know how about we take it down she's like how oh, i'm not racist i'm dating you you're black you know it's like it's ignorance is is right, is, right. is, is, <laughs> is ignorance stupidity but it's a lot of people it's like you know you look on the internet they're like this guy posing in front of a Confederate flag, it's like, oh, he's fucking racist. Dude. Well, you immediately. It's like, oh, oh yeah. Snap and that's the, yeah. that's the that's the millennial world that we're in today where everyone is just like, sees something, judges it instantly mm-hmm. and writes it off and cancels it and doesn't think about it twice. It's like, okay, well, I see a guy that probably doesn't have a pot to piss in, Confederate flag in front of his house. I'm going to go stop and just talk to him. And maybe he's shitty. Maybe he's super racist and, and some stuff comes out of his mouth. But more times than not, that's not the case at all. And that just and that goes for people of color. That goes for white people. That goes for Mexican people. That goes for anyone that I've ever come across. It's like I'd rather see it for myself than just drive by and be like, white trash right whatever you know yeah. like racist you know like that's no no that's not the way because i you know i grew up in a trailer like you know like i was like yeah that's too <clears throat> yeah i was like you know like i said a couple steps away from being like that so it's like why wouldn't i take the time if this is what i'm gonna do why wouldn't i take the time to actually get to know these people yeah so that's my biggest thing it's just like being respectful i'm not doing poverty porn I'm just drawn to people that struggle because I could give a shit about taking a photo of some rich person or a famous person or influencer that bores the hell out of me. Yeah. Like I'd rather, I'd rather sit here and have a beer with, with Earl and chill <laughs> and like, you know, talk about t- that Ford pickup. He's yeah. Been working on. yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That I know nothing about. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of how I approach photography and, try to show people something that they might not actually look at. And this whole project was to show people be like <clears throat> kind of the punk rock side of me, skateboarder side of me being like, I know you don't want to look at this, but you know, maybe you should, you're going to look at it yeah. because that's real life right there, you know? And it's like, yeah, you don't like it. It makes you uncomfortable, but that's good. You should be uncomfortable. You shouldn't just be in your own little echo chamber bumble bubble, you know, like, that that's that's boring and it gives people perspective and i mean i'm no innovator of any of this stuff i'm just mimicking people that i look up to you know yeah yeah well dude your photography's rad um thanks have you had any uh anyone approach you and and offer to like like paid projects or anything that you've done Um, i mean as far as my documentary work goes? Yeah, or just anything in general. I don't know what you do full time or like So full time I'm a low voltage technician. Okay. Like, I I pull wire for a living for my Hey me too, man. Yeah. Right there in there I doing work for that. company. Yeah. 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 All day long. I work for a company called Clearcom for one of my best friends, Bill. He told me not to talk about him so long on the podcast and I he was a real funny guy. Yeah, we don't talk about it. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But he was like, uh, so he offered me a job, right? So I was working at Parkside, pandemic hit, and stuff was getting really weird around there with the pandemic. And I ended up, he offered me a job, and I was like, man, I haven't had like a... Was that your bike that was always parked out front at Parkside all the time? Mine or one of my 30 friends. There was one in particular. uh, I don't know if you had like the cross on the sissy bar or something welded to the sissy bar. Um, 
So my there was t- always the same <clears throat> cho- like chopped out bike right out front, and I was like, I wonder who that is. Yeah, Anyways, it, it was know. probably one of mine or or. or no, a lot of the Haynes dudes hung out there. That's like that was spot, yeah, though. that was our bar for sure. But um, yeah, I would ride my motorcycle there all the time. But yeah, he would just he was he offered me a job, and I was like, hell yeah, like I'm I'm bartending is kind of. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with this virus and all this stuff. These bars are closing. I was like, I'm just going to jump in here. And I've been doing it for since the beginning of the pandemic. And I, I love it. We travel all over the country and do stuff like that. And That's awesome, man. So, but no, I've never been, I mean, I've had. Um, I know you take pictures of bikes and stuff like that. I didn't know if you had anything. Um, a lot of the dudes have, uh, you know, articles in like Dice and stuff like that. Yeah, I shoot a lot for Dice. Okay, um, yeah. sweet. Yeah, man. Yeah, and I, um, I've done commercial work here and there. Like I've shot a couple weddings. I've shot a couple, um, you know, just like I shot for Yellowhammer, their clothing. Um, I've shot for, you know, my buddy's restaurants, bars, stuff like that. So just like freelance gigs and stuff. But, yeah. I have a really unique style and not everyone's going to really vibe with that. And I can do any type of photography, but I try to stay true to my style. So if someone's like, they're like, Hey, we want you to shoot our wedding. I'm like, all right. Okay. Right. This I was is like, what it's going to look like. I was like, I are you sure you, that's what you want? <laughs> Cause like, it's going to be a lot of just raw film and I shoot digital too, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, I don't really, I'd like, never get paid for photos and like this whole um gas and museum of art uh show that's happening like i'm like oh museum like i don't like me right. <laughs> are you sure about that like i'm like you know but the show's already printed and everything's good and i talked to the director the other day and he was like i'm i'm glad that you're chill and i was like there's like do you mind if we do your photos like hold like Put pins in the back of your photos and do them like this. And I was like, I don't care what you do. I was like, oh, I'm sure the stuff they have to deal with as like a museum director is insane. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I don't. I was like, I don't care. You're put gonna, gum on it. Yeah, I was like, you're gonna hang it up. He's like, oh, just so, nail it to the I wall. He's thing. like, I'm so. He's like, I'm so thrilled. You're just so chill about it. And I was like, oh yeah, man. I mean, dude, just, that's sick, man. We'll have to go to the gas and check that out. Yeah, um, absolutely. I did see. Uh, yes. You were talking about your book, and you brought a copy of it. Um, you actually put together uh-huh, yeah. uh, a collection of photos. Tell me about this. What What is this that we have? Um, so this is just um, this is just a zine that I put together. Um, my friend Nick Brunson um, has a bindery out in Homewood called Banner Digital Printing and Publishing, and he's made every one of my books, every one of my zines. Well, shout out to Nick. We had him on during the Haste podcast. There you so, go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So him and his father have owned that company for 30 plus years. Okay. And Sweet. Uh, he's a, they're both very talented. So um, I had all these photos just like basically from cameras like this, just like, you know, a little point and shoot camera um, being like just bar life, just motorcycle trips, you know, shows whatever you know yeah and uh i was like i'm sitting on all these photos and i was like and then recently one of my good friends uh passed away on his motorcycle he got hit by a car uh leaving leaving the dojo party a few months ago and uh i had and i and you know i was really tore up about it and stuff and uh i was in the dark room and I developed some film that I had laying around and, and this, this photo was sitting there and I held the negative up to the light and I saw this photo and that was the very last time that I saw him a few days later, he, he, he passed away, you know? Man. So Dang. it kind of, I sat there with this photo and just kind of like had a moment in my dark room and be like, what the fuck? You know, like that's why photography is so important. You know, like that stupid ass grin on his face through his glasses, sitting there we're we're getting ready to go to Rojo right there and eat lunch. And then he hits the road after that, you know? And I was like that, you know, I was just like, click, there's my buddy, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, then he dies and I come across it in my dark room and I'm like, the fuck, I probably have a million photos like this of just friends that like, I just look at and I'm like, all right, there's fucking Kenny with his dick out, you know, (laughs) or be like, you know, there's, you know, my friend Callie, dumping her boobs out or, or, you know, there's homeboy drunk at the bar or there's Nick Brunson at haste. And 
Oh, okay. You, Sick. Yeah. You know, there's Zach and, you know, it's just, there's all of us at the river and it's just, you know, casual kind of just, there's some, a little bit of documentary stuff in there, like friends I have that I need to go hang out with, you know? So, and a little bit of motorcycle stuff and. Just kind of like a home op, it's, like a it's stuff hodgepodge that, of different photography and stuff. Yeah, it's collect. stuff that yeah. I wouldn't really ever do anything with that when I saw that photo of Cody and I was like, I was like, let's make something that lasts forever. Like he's gone. Let me just, let me put this photo, let me make a print of this photo and put it down. And then let me see how much other photos I have like this. And, you know, Nick was nice enough to just lay it all out for me. And, um, this is what we came up with and it's super simple. It's not like high quality. Like it's, it, it's, it actually is pretty high quality Dude, um, I think so. Man, for a zine, awesome, you know, yeah. but people were like, Oh, you went spiral bound with it. And I was like, well, once you hold it and you start flipping through and seeing how it, easy everything is, like lay flat. Yeah. So. yeah. And everything. Yeah, exactly. Everything lays flat and, uh, you know, it, it ends up, you know, working out. So, um, dude, that's so sick. Man. It's just volume one. I have, you know, probably, so many hard drives filled of shit like that from yeah. from these little type of cameras and stuff, and um, it's just maybe a little a little bible of a time and place in my life, you know. So mm-hmm. it's not supposed to be, you know, like I, it all started with my buddy dying, but it's not supposed to be that heavy. It's just yeah. a zine about my friendship and and the day in life of, you know, just some asshole. So. <laughs> well, dude, that's awesome, yeah. man. Like just being in the crew, you know, being part of your friends and stuff. I'm sure everybody, I would be stoked if I had a buddy that like, hey, here's all the rad times we've had. I mm-hmm. put together in a little booklet and, you know. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this is so sick. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends are stoked on it. Some of my friends, I'm like, all right, I'm doing a pre-sale for like three weeks straight. And then they'll be like, you know, four weeks after the pre-sale and this shit comes out, they're like, hey, man, like what's up with that zine? Like, can I get one of those? I'm like... Oh my God, I love you to death, but I did a whole thing. I, I did a it. whole thing on the internet. <laughs> like, so I don't have to do this. But yeah, like every, every one of my friends is supportive for, of it for the most part. They, you know, they give me shit about everything, but that's what friends do. So yeah, it's man. all good. Well, that's cool, dude. It seems like you're really dedicated to photography and what you're doing and stuff. And, you know, a lot of people just, like myself included, just took a bunch of pictures and then I just leave them on a hard drive and never mm-hmm. look at them again, you know? Yeah. Just start actually printing them printing at CVS. Them and, yeah. and shout out to my <laughs> friend, uh, Justin Self. He's a photographer. We had him on when we first started the podcast. He was probably one of our second or third guests. And uh, he travels all over the world. He's actually on the road right now, uh, maybe going to Yellowstone or something. I'm not sure where he's going. But they're working on a documentary, he and some buddies, and uh, he was selling some of his prints. And I love this photo of the boat yeah, that's that he so had. Good. It's a and, great uh, photograph. Yeah, and he was like selling them, and I think somebody else, I don't know if I could talk about this, but somebody else had actually bought that photo, and I was like, no, 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 no. I got to have that photo. <laughs> and so I was like, what do I got to do to get that photo? So we worked out a deal. And so i uh, sorry to whoever yeah. uh, originally wanted that print, but I was like, nah, I got to have it. Well, tough shit. You should yeah, have brought man. some more money to the table. So I told him I'd <laughs> shout him out. But man, I wish I, I wish I had the skills to do like good photography i don't know maybe if i dedicated more time to it um, well you clearly got yeah. all the equipment to do it with um yeah. i think um, i think my problem is i would be going out of town or going on a trip or something and because i'd you know doing like wedding photography and, and working for an av company and just always working with cameras like when i'm finally doing something fun yeah it's not i don't fun. care to document it yeah like, it's not I, fun anymore <laughs> i just yeah. i would leave my camera in the bag you know if i didn't absolutely had to have a picture you know iphone just take a picture yeah and be done yeah um, well that's the deal man like that's where i was like not i was like oh maybe i'll be a full-time commercial photographer and i was like why 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 would i do that like there's so many other people that are better the at life that. Out of you. well there's so many people that are better at that than me and i just i don't want to turn something i love into a hustle and then lose my love for it yes and like yes dude. You know, that kind of happened with getting sponsored for skateboarding and stuff like i lo- yeah okay take me back i you, love that and, you mentioned earlier that you had a career in skateboarding um, well it wasn't a career i just got free shit i didn't get paid really or anything i was i didn't know if you were like working for like uh you know working for vans or you were actually skating like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you were shredding, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I was shredding. Yeah. All right. Sure. Well, take me back to your days of, of shredding. What was that about? And- um, 
I mean, I started skateboarding when I was eight or nine years old in Northern California, just going to Derby Skate Park and stuff and uh, getting my skateboard taken away from my dad for having bad grades and, yeah. <laughs> you know, him getting bummed out when uh, I decided that I didn't want to do Little League anymore and I just wanted to skateboard and, you know, it turns into an obsession and yeah. you love it to death and I wouldn't be where I am today. I don't know if that's good or not, but if it wasn't for skateboarding. <laughs> sure. But, you know, it teaches you everything. It teaches you social skills. It teaches you determination. It te teaches you, you know, like just street-wise skills, um, you know. Uh, so it teaches you about culture and about traveling and about – you know, keeping your head on a swivel when you're at a sketchy spot and, you know, so I loved it. It was like I, I grew up in the streets doing it every day and um, I, I loved it to death. And when I moved to Chicago, it was just like, all right, here's a whole new world, like a whole new friends and everything. And um, I had sponsors when I was in high school and stuff I rode for this company called Bain Skateboards they were just a local skate skateboard company and um, I was sponsored by um, 68 Skate in Pacific Grove California and then I moved to Chicago and I was on Vox Shoes I don't know if you remember Vox Shoes they were 88 footwear for a long time yeah oh yeah, yeah but yeah. they turned into Vox and uh, then yeah. I was on. I used to love the '88 logo with the wings and stuff. Yes, I thought it was so exactly. sick. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, they had rad shoes, man. Yeah, they did. But that, cool that that's what turned into Vox. Out. You know, Ed Dominic and all that stuff. Um, he Is turned Vox still around? I think you know? they are actually. I'm not sure. There was a lot of cool companies um, like Duff. You remember Decline? I remember oh yeah, Duff. like Decline was there. Yeah, Duff. I don't think sweet. they're around. I don't know if Duff's still around. They might be. I don't know. I, I had these wacky freaking lime green, all green. <laughs> Those were the coolest like, shoes. tennis shoes, looking <laughs> skate shoes. Those were the shoes. coolest shoes, dude. I thought they were sick, man. And. uh <laughs> I think you, my brother was a day. badass with those fucking white and black strap. With, with I looked like a clown, shoes. man. I'm sure I did. But, the long uh, ass hair. Yeah, those green duff shoes. That's awesome. If I could get my green duffs and my uh, fallen uh, Beetlejuice hoodie, yeah. just, I'm gonna be right back in there. Yeah, yeah. I'll start scouring the internet. So if I can she, she might not be. She might be leaving you before Dude, that happens. I was so. cool. Man. <laughs> yeah, just as long as you keep telling yourself that. As long as she likes it, that's all that matters. Yeah, for sure. No, uh, but, like, I was just – I didn't get paid for skateboarding or anything. Okay. It was just, like, I got free shit, and I got to travel the country, and um, I was – you know, my best, I was on Chris Markovich's company, Crim, uh, Given Skateboards. Okay. I was am for them, and then a bunch of shit happened. Dude, and, it's it's tough, man. It's a young man's game. It's uh, It is, man, and I was the dude 40 hours a week working in a yeah. warehouse, like – busting my ass throwing liquor boxes online and then skateboarding and trying to get clips on the weekends. I, d I wasn't, it was like, I had to be like, all right, you're 24, 23 years old. It's like, it's you like, got to make a this decision gonna pan out. Let's, let's decide what we're going to do with our life. So right? it was just like, you know, and then, you know, torn meniscus, broken ankle, you know, and I'm just like, all right, I, I got to still work. I have to yeah. make money. I don't have mom or dad to rely on. I don't have a savings account. Like, I got to go to work, man. I got to drive my forklift. I got to pay for my car insurance. I got to pay my rent. Because if I don't, I'm living on my friend's couch, if not on the streets. So yeah. I got to figure it out. So it was like I never made the full leap to, like, trying to actually do it Um Sometimes, you know what I mean? I, I, and I'm never, like, jaded about it or anything. I'm not, like, the 36-year-old dude that's like, oh, I could have made oh, it. I should have. Yeah. yeah, I should have done this. There's tricks I think about that I'm like, oh, fuck, I wish I did that. Yeah. But, you know, other than that, it's like I I think skateboarding. I owe it everything, you know? Yeah. Skateboarding is. Me too, man. Like, skating just, like, defined who I was for such a huge part of my life and Basically, I am who I am today because of skateboarding. Yeah, exactly. Relationships you make through skateboarding, friendships, and just yeah. everything, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to get another beer. How long do you guys normally go with these things? Uh, usually about an hour, hour and a half. So we're kind of. I was like, I could fucking talk for Dude, three yeah, hours. No, Don't. You, you, you just got to shut me off. Um, 
yeah, no, we never really set a true time limit. It's just kind of like you can kind of tell when the conversation's starting to run dry a little bit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, for sure. With the Haints dudes, um, have you gone on? I know they take like a super trip every year, mm -hmm. and, and then they take smaller trips and stuff. Um, any cool, memorable bike trips besides the one where you almost got killed by an 18-wheeler <laughs> locked up your bike? Uh, yeah, uh, man, yeah. I've been on numerous super trips um were you on the trip where they all dressed up in painting attire yeah the white trip okay. I was, yeah. yes yes that seemed, it was that seemed pretty epic yeah that was a great one we went out we didn't really have uh you know anywhere that we wanted to go in specific we there was a bike show that we wanted to go to in charlotte so we went there and then we're just like let's go to west virginia i guess and I can't remember whose idea it was to wear all white, but it was it was a ridiculous <laughs> thing. It, there was an idea to for everyone to shave their eyebrows off and take everyone oh, shave their eyebrows off and take a trip with your eyebrows shaved. Or that might have been for the next trip. I'm getting them all mixed up. But did you ever do the eyebrow no, shaving? No, 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 no. But the white the white pants thing. I don't know if it was Robbie or John or. Someone, I don't know, they had the idea of like, let's just wear the same pants and same shirt, white, and they have to be white because, you know, we're bikers, we wear black all the time, yeah. you know, brother. But like, <laughs> yeah. it's a joke, but it's, uh, we we're like, you know, let's wear all white and just see how fucked we are. Like, let's just see how Don't fucked. change. Yeah. yeah, no, we didn't. And I took photos of everyone, um, Actually, published uh, Nick published a book of that whole trip. It's called Lost in Appalachia. Really? Yeah. I Maybe he mentioned that. On the, I know we talked about that trip. Um, I don't know why that trip stands out in my head. I yeah, I have a I have a whole book I categorizing that. that. So um, I'll have to show that to you guys sometime. But um, yeah, we wore the same clothes the whole entire trip, and I remember us being at a gas station, and this guy comes up and he's like. To our buddy John, he's like, "What's up uh, with all the white?" And my buddy John goes, "Oh, we're uh, we're riding for a cause." And the guy's like, "Oh, what's the cause?" And he's like, "Cause we're bikers." <laughs> and you just looked at him, was like, "The fuck is wrong with you?" Like, okay, dude, yeah, whatever. And like everyone, you know, you'd get different people at different gas stations. Be like, "Did you guys just get off of work? Like, are you a painting crew that only travels <laughs> yeah, with motorcycles?" Travel my bike, yeah. Like, what the hell is going on? That's our gimmick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was fucking ridiculous. We got so we like it was insane. And you know, and I think that was the trip where we tried to take dirt roads everywhere too. So we we're just ultra fuck, like sleeping in the dirt, like in the middle of the woods of West Virginia, going like crossing rivers and stuff on our Harleys and getting stuck in state parks and getting yelled at by the cops. And now what are you riding when you hit the road for a long haul? What what are you on? Um, I have a 1973 shovelhead, which is a Harley Davidson. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was my uncle's bike back in the day and he died on it in 1988. And oh, then, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was a shrine to my aunt for 20 years. And then she one day called me up. She's like, well, she told me before, she's like, you can come, you can, uh, when I die, I want you to have Uncle Jimmy Shovelhead. Because I was getting into bikes that I had like an XS 650 chopper. And uh, and I was like, the wow. The same one that exploded on you? No, that was an XS 750. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> But right. yeah, close enough. Um but she was like, yeah, uh, you know, when I die, I want you to have this bike. But then she calls me a few months later, and she's like, hey, you can come get this bike whenever you want. And I was like, I was like, oh, shit. Like, are you dying? Like, what's going on? You just told me. She's like, no. She's like, you rode on this bike before you were born. She goes, uh, your Uncle Jimmy used to give your mother rides to the hospital when she was pregnant with you on this bike. Whoa. So, Oh, dude. Yeah. Heavy history there, man. Yeah, yeah. So, Do you have a picture of that anywhere? Um, um, I click do, back out of this photo, Katie. I don't think I have a photo on. on I recently uh, disabled my personal Instagram just because I wanted to focus on my photography. Oh, okay. so there's not going to be a photo on here of it. Um, uh, well, it, actually, there's a photo of it on that American Frolic on that other tab. Yeah, is that the bike you took in the? Yeah, that's it. If you not that one, if you scroll down, there might be a better photo of it somewhere. Um, there it is on the right, right there. Yeah, it's in it's in pieces right now, but dude, that thing looks awesome. All right, yeah. let's talk about the. Is that a crazy Frank? It is. Fender? Look at you, is that man. What that is, Mr. Okay. Biker. All right, holy yeah, yeah, yeah. shit! 
I don't know Not much. Not a lot of people know about that. Man. I know, man. And they are hard to find, dude. They are, um, yeah. That's I a Franks. Was, I, I love the Frank and the, like, the King Queen. Uh, yeah, so dude, that wasn't... Dude, that, that's so sick, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, that's not what my by that's not what my uncle's bike looked like at all. It was pretty much a stock FLH, fat bobs and a and a bob fender and all that, but yeah. That's what I turned it into and now it's in pieces and it doesn't look anything like that anymore. But I've had it for about 10 years now, so I try to redo it every so often. So I would have seen that around town maybe. Um at Yeah, some there's point a portrait your... of him on the gas tank. So he looks he kind of looks like Bob Seger, but my friend po- painted a portrait of him oh, okay. on the front of the on the top of the gas. He looks like you either get like, why do you have a portrait of Bob Seger painted on your gas tank? I was like, I love Bob Seger, and man. And a lot of people are like, why do you have a portrait of yourself painted I on your gas wind, tank? Against the wind, dude. Come I'm on. like, yeah, I'm a fucking asshole. I got a portrait of myself painted on my own gas tank for sure. What the fuck is wrong with you? That's not me. It looks nothing like me. Um, but a lot of people get, I like get a lot of people, Jesus, um, mm. Bob Seger. If you go back out, there might be another photo of the gas tank somewhere. Um, but we don't have to search too hard for it. it. Sounds annoying. I'm interested now. Well, we can find it at some point if you yeah. uh, shoot it to me. But yeah, man, the uh, the Frank Fender, that's cool. Yeah, I, I don't know the history of all that stuff, but I do know when I was trying to find them, they're like really hard to find. They're really expensive, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, you basically have to fabricate it yourself. Or I don't know if you can well, buy them pre-made for like certain bikes or what well they're expensive forever because crazy frank went to jail and he's been in prison for don't quote me on how long but a long time but he recently got out of prison and he's redoing all those fenders again so he's making them again so he was like the dude that created that design yep yeah yeah he was a member of the galloping goose motorcycle club he was the president and i'm not going to speak of what he went to jail for but he went to jail for a long time and he paid his dues and he's out and he's back in the scene, and he's making fenders again. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I just thought that was like a. I mean, I I guess it was. Can a we go back to, to it? Because I hate to be the dude, but I. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. So, well, I'll let him tell you. But yes, on the back of the bike, it's the the fender on the rear. Okay. Uh huh. See where the seats attached to, and that silver thing that comes up out of the back. Yes. So if you see behind my exhaust, see how my exhaust points up like that? Yes. So those are shocks. So a lot of people uh, in the 70s and 80s, they would run rigid frames, which those shocks wouldn't be there, and it's right. just a it's just a rigid bike. Yeah, right. dude. And so, you, so you can make a king and queen seat easy with a sissy bar and all that stuff. They go straight from the wheel all yeah, the way up. Exactly. So but if you wanted to keep your bike swing arm – this was an alternative to having a king and queen seat with a sissy bar, with a um, with a tail light and the license plate bracket all in one. So it was all encompassing, and they called them the rear connections. Is what they were called, Crazy Frank's rear connections. Okay, so, so it gives you that comfort of a soft tail, but it still looks mm-hmm. rad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you still I have that you. sleek design. Yeah, so it almost looks like there's no shocks there, especially because mine have covers over them. They're, they're solid covers over them. But, yeah, that's that's that was his alternative to being like, all right, you just bolt this thing on and go, which isn't I'm sure those, it's not those, quite that easy. Yeah. Those stock fenders, if you bolt them on where the swing arm tabs sit, uh, where the shocks mount on the swing arm tabs there, they sit like a foot and a half above the wheel. It looks like a dirt bike. Yes. So you want it to get that low profile without <laughs> yeah. bottoming out or whatever. So what I did is I, I – this is what he tells you to do is you cut those shock mounts back and you move them back and you re-weld them. So that brings the fender down closer to the to the tire. So it still has room to move, but – Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's all You still of, bottom out oh, if yeah, you go over a big hill or something. From... You get a big big girl <laughs> big girl on the back of that bike, you'll bottom her out, no problem. Or big boy, you know, whatever. You, whatever. I've had homies on the back of that bike and been like, I smell burning. And he's like – It was like – Oh, that's oh, the rubber. Don't worry about it. I was ass. like, oh, yeah, your fucking, your fucking tire's on fire. Like, you, like pull over. <laughs> like, you know, I've had so many grooves because there's, there's uh, bolts on the inside, and if you – push that thing down far enough, those bolts will go oh, dude. get dug in. But that's that's rare. That's cool, man. Yeah. So you've taken that bike on like long trips and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Chicago to California and back, around Lake Michigan. See, I asked Nick and Dwayne when they were here, you know, they're all riding like rigid frames and I'm like, mm-hmm. that has to be wow. murder. I've never yes. ridden one, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, but 
Yeah. It just seems like it would be so brutal. And they're like, no, it's comfortable, man. It's not bad at all. Yeah, they're full of shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, they're not. Like, like, it's there's... like the equivalent of getting in like a Red Rider wagon and being dragged down the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or pretty a close. Shopping cart, you know. Pretty damn close. You're not off with that one. Yeah. So I had a rigid for a little while, but th- these those dudes have had rigids forever. Th- this was the hand I was dealt with, right? So I could turn that pretty bike into a into a rigid easily. I could, you know, cut the rear end off and weld a you know a hard tail on it. And everyone was like, "Are you going to do that?" And I was like. This was, you know, 10 years ago when I saw that, what a crazy Frank Fender was. And I was like, no, I want to put one of those things on it. Like, those things are fucking whack looking, dude. They're no, so, it's not, dude. Dude, but 10 years ago, you can get them for 200 bucks. Really? Yeah, you can get them with the seat. I don't think they look whack at all. I think yeah. they're awesome. So, like, they, those things were hated on when I had one. Really? And, and I just, and I was like, fuck y'all. Like, I think it looks cool, you oh, know? dude, I'm with you, man. So, that I rocked awesome. it. And then everyone, you know... <clears throat> Not saying I'm a fucking trendsetter or anything, but like every, years go by and yeah. they got cool again. And I was like, I bought mine for 200 bucks for my buddy with the seat and everything. They're like, now they're $1,500 yeah. if you want a used old shitty one. Yeah. So, but um, that that was the hand I was dealt. So I've always had a swing arm bike, you know? And um, that, I mean, it is what it is. Like yeah. I, if I had a, if I had a, I wasn't going to cut up my uncle's bike, you know. Yeah, I was yeah, going to leave the that. frame and the, you know, everything as, as, as close as I could because one day that frame will be worth as much as a straight leg frame mm-hmm. that came from the factory, you know, 60, 70 years ago. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Dude, but, that's awesome. Did you have to do much to it to get it running after it sat for 20 years or however long? Ma'am, so I took it back. Um, and it got shipped to my buddy Warren's shop in Milwaukee. We took it back to Chicago to Bravetown, and uh, that was our our motorcycle shop, kind of like the dojo is here. Okay. We're, we're almost like, you know, all of us have been friends for years. We're like sister shops pretty much. But took it there, and you know, I didn't know a lot about Harley's because this was my first one. So I learned a lot through those dudes at Bravetown, and they're all older dudes, and they've had Harley's for longer than me, and they. You know, I learned everything I have learned about a motorcycle has been through them. So they got it. You know, we put some new points, put a battery in it, put some fresh gas in it, cleaned the carb, and it fired right up. Like, really? first kick. And I was like, this is mine. It's running. Like, it's been sitting Dude, for 30 awesome, years. Dude, that's awesome, man. You know, so it was a, you know, it's a great feeling, especially, like, when you take it all the way down and you take the motor out and you take the motor all apart and you put it on this table and you put it all back together and you have your friends that have made your handlebars or this, that. I'm no fabricator, but I'm not a bike builder at all. Like, I can piece some stuff together, but I have friends that are bike builders. Yeah, and yeah. You know, I'm a skateboarder with a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I, I, I'm not ashamed to say that at all. I don't give a fuck. So, but I have friends, you know, like, I always try to include my friends that in, in my motorcycle. I have a vision, you know, that I want to see happen, and that's a cool collaboration for me. So, like... My buddy Jeff Wright made that pipe. Um, my buddy Bobby the Leg made those trees, which are narrowed 41 millimeter trees. Raked out, yeah, man. Uh, my buddy Scott Craig gave me that rear wheel. Uh, Dave Polgreen made those handlebars for me, and the list goes on. So it's like you got a piece of your homies. Yeah. And, and right now, I have so many friends that are. You know, like my buddy Kevo made my my new pipe, and my buddy Sam made my handlebars, and my buddy Cody that passed away actually made my trees, my my new uh, triple trees on my bike. So I'll have a little piece of him forever on yeah. my bike. So he made those from scratch. So, oh, yeah. you know, so it's cool. It's cool to you know have a piece of history that. I've been on since before I was born and watch it go down the road and ride it next to my friends who are doing the same thing. I guess every winter does it you just get the bug it's like oh, I'm going to change this I'm going to change this and just Well it's break weird it you do and, and, you do in Chicago yeah. cuz you have a winter. Here I can ride year round. There's well, you, no winter here. Technically you could. It's a little chilly it's like the past couple <laughs> yeah. of weeks man. It's been a little, you know. Yeah. I think it's going to get down to like what I think they said tonight's like the coldest night of the year so far. Oh really? Like what? 17 or something? No way. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, You're about to look it up. Gonna, <laughs> for me, you fact check it. <laughs> you know, not having ever lived in Chicago, when it gets down below 40, it's like, dude, it's cold. I don't know about this. Uh, oh yeah, we're talking negative 40 in Chicago, <laughs> dude. My friend Nick, he just bought a, uh, a 1200 Sportster, and yeah. I went and helped him pick it up. And the day we went and got it, it was probably like, it didn't get above 50. 
I was like, dude, it's a little chilly, man. Yeah, so especially when you get moving up. too. Yeah, especially no. when you get the wind chill. I'm and stuff. discrediting. It gets cold here, and it's a different type of cold too than than up north or anywhere. You know, like it's a wet cold down wet here. Wet cold. It's weird to say that. Humidity it's, sounds terrible, but um, how do you know about motorcycles? How do you know what a crazy Frank's fender is? Just my dad was always into bikes and riding and stuff. Oh, and cool. So um, I uh, my first bike was a Honda Shadow. Yeah. It was like all chromed out. Hell yeah. Um, just bought it off a dude off Craigslist. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, um, my dad upgraded to a Road King, and I inherited his uh, – he had a Kawasaki Vulcan that we still have. And we've kind of, like, made some uh, – done a lot of stuff to it, put, like, a peanut tank on it because I always like the Hell chopper yeah. look and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right behind this wall behind you, I've got a uh, Softail Evo Harley that I'm going to be taking hopefully tomorrow. About to... damn time. Yeah. I know, dude. Well, <laughs> dude. well, I told you I went and took uh, my buddy Nick. Shout out to Nick. He just uh, he had some money. He wrecked his car. And he's like, man, I'm a, I don't have enough money to buy another car. There's not really any deals right now. But I found this 1200 Sportster this guy's selling. Nice. We looked I like at it. Style. It was beautiful. It was like a 99. <laughs> car? Hell no. Let's get dude. a bike. So Hell we yeah. got a bike. Nick Willis, he's awesome. And... um it's the first bike he's had in like seven years. And so that kind of inspired me because I've had this bike sitting down here for a while. Because I've had the other, I've had the Vulcan to ride. Well, it's hard when you have two bikes. I just got another bike and it's different. It takes, you're just like, but you well, were, you were that? saying earlier, like you're not a, you're not a fabricator and neither am I. And I started pulling it apart and really I, I felt like I was over my head and I've got too many projects going on. This podcast being one of them. Yeah. So I know I'll probably never get around to it. So I reached out to Nick Resty. And I was like, hey, man, yeah. who would you recommend that I could take this to that could just give it a, a thorough looking at and tell me what it's going to take to get it right? Loaf. He, loaf. Yeah. So he mentioned Loaf at Sanctuary uh-huh. Cycles. Yeah. And I uh, messaged him, and Loaf's like, bring it on, man. It looks yeah. awesome. And yeah. so hopefully yeah. Loaf's going to get me on the road. I'll I show was, it to he's you. He's a great guy, man. He'll he'll do you solid. I was, at, I was hanging out with him earlier today. Okay, sweet. Yeah, he's yeah. done a lot of work for – He's really good with all types of bikes, but he's specifically good with like newer bikes. Like I have a 2001 FXDP, a Dyna Defender. It's a police okay. bike. Oh, and, wow. Dude. Awesome. Yeah. And I don't fucking know anything about it. I was just like, oh, it's twin cam. I bought it from my buddy. He's like, dude, yeah. yeah. He's like, you just turn the key and just ride it. Go. And I was like, okay. And, you know, that's the case most of the time. But sometimes there's issues and it's an old cop bike. So there are fucking wires on it that go to the moon. And I'm like... I was like, I I don't know. I don't know. I'd rather just be like, I got a lot of shit going on. Like, I'd rather just pay my buddy and see him win and see yes. me riding a motorcycle. And I'm like, dude, you need to put food on the table. So let me give you some money and I'll be on my bike and I'll learn something while you do it and we'll be done. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. I was like, if I'm ever going to ride this thing, I need someone else to just So just it's take a it it's an Evo though? Yes. Oh, sweet. Hell yeah. Um, what year? Uh I knew the year when I first got it here. It's been down here for probably about a year and a half. Yeah. And so I was kind of forgotten about it. Um, yeah. No, but I'm that's one of the on best the motors that Harley ever made is an Evo. It doesn't matter what year it is. I need to uh, – I'll show it to you when we get done yeah. recording. But Hell yeah. yeah, man. It's uh, hopefully uh, – he said he had a couple of projects right now, but hopefully he can get to it and kind of – if it doesn't break the bank, you know, we'll get it back on the road. Yeah, just start. Around. Yeah, so. just is it everything there? Like all it's the... all there, man. The only thing is, it's just been sitting. So okay, we found the bike. I say we. My dad had a coworker whose dad had the bike originally, bought it new, oh, and yeah. they think that maybe he had a scare or something happened because uh-huh. one day he just parked it and then he never touched it again. Yeah, and it literally just sat there for like twenty years. And for anybody listening, I'll put a photo of it up on on the page but uh that'll that'll happen so this it's day just been age. sitting there but it's got oil in it and so we think the motor's basically good everything's kind of dry rotted mm-hmm. so a lot of the hoses will have to be replaced if not mm-hmm. all yeah obviously new tires and then there's some rust in the tank so yeah. that i don't know how difficult that's going to be to restore get the rust out you know yeah they make this stuff called cream that just you just put, put in, in there and, and then, shake it around well yeah you get some old nuts and bolts to get all the rust out and then you line the inside of the tank and depending on how bad it is that it, you should be fine yeah and, but so i don't know yeah, yeah you'll be fine man i It'll hope be, so i'm uh it's an I'm evo psyched man I'm it's psyched. an evo yeah dude so I hopefully low will get it going man yeah if you had low for nick over here um well know, i asked nick just I was like, to get nick, you started. work on bikes and nick's like no i don't work on bikes man i just work on my own thing <laughs> he's like but I'll, I'll give you a friend of mine that can do it and yeah so i was like okay so no that's solid for sure 
Yeah, that's a different age riding a motorcycle today because everyone's fucking doing this, Mm -hmm. you know, and not paying attention to you on two wheels. And it takes them to move two inches to end your life. Yeah, dude. So you have to be an aggressive rider. You know what I mean? You got to have your head like, you know, you guys are skateboarders. Like, you'll be fine. But you have to be three steps ahead of everybody else. You got to be looking at each light and... I just watch people's wheels and be like, all right, are their wheels moving? Like, you what just, do you do? Yeah. yeah, you just watch the wheels, and if the, the wheels start to move, you just slow down and make sure that you can stop. You're not, like, stressed out, but you're just aware, and it makes you a better person. Yeah. It really does. It's, it's like – tune. <laughs> that's kind of the same thing with skateboarding, right? Your head's on a swivel. You're always paying attention. You're aware of your surroundings, and, you know, you like – I've been in a bunch of motorcycle accidents. I know how to fall. So. Ooh, man. <laughs> so. Well, that's scary. You said when you locked it up, I was like, oh, that's a death sentence. You know, that's, oh, man. Yeah. I was just happened, my motor just happened to blow up when I was passing the semi and just locked up and like slid and like. So you couldn't even pull in the clutch or anything. It would have just no, I mean, it was locked I, no matter what. Yeah, I don't think so because it was shaft drive, shaft, like yeah. a damn car. So it just instantly started going side to side and just locking up and i was like i didn't god man it's amazing you're still with us man that's crazy yeah, it, all, that's, it always buffs, it always buffs out <laughs> well dude this has been a rad conversation man talking with you about photography and we could probably nerd on bikes forever so uh, yeah thanks for coming to hang absolutely and, uh, thank I you guys man if anybody wanted to check out your photography or pick up your book you got here. Well, with a bunch you, of really they odd. can go to Sanctuary Cycles and pick that up. I have four copies there. Okay. But I did a pre-sale for these because, you know, it's a lot of money to front all this stuff. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I did a pre-sale for them. So, and I was, I'm like, I'm like, do the one batch and get it and get one while you can. So it makes it kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, rare and cool. So... I you know I sold about a hundred copies of those and there's some at Sanctuary Cycles. Um, he he was kind enough to buy one, so go over there and Sick, grab man. one if you want. So. Support love, but I don't have any to sell, just for the record. <laughs> but you do? Do you sell any of your prints or yeah. anything like that? If somebody was interested in one of your yeah, if you yeah for sure, yeah. man. If you okay. want, if you if you see something you like on my website or on my Instagram, or I've took a photo of you in the past, just. Hit me up and, you know, I'll, I'll get you a print gladly, easily. Sweet. Well, Jeremiah, thanks, man. Thank Congrats. you guys, man. It's a pleasure being here. <laughs>